When you're working in Excel, there are certain formatting standards that you're going to want to know, especially for financial modeling. Any sort of hard-coded numbers, your assumptions or your inputs are going to be colored blue. So here I've just typed in 137.837, and this blue color tells me that this is, it's not a calculation, it's not a reference, this is a place where I've just typed in a number into the cell. So if I come back and I want to change something, or if I send this to somebody else and they want to change my assumptions, they'll know by this blue color that this is where they go. This is not a default color in Excel's font colors. If you look under theme colors and standard colors, this color is not there. You need to go down to more colors which I'll do by hitting M and you can get it by selecting this color on the color wheel or by tabbing over to custom and then tabbing down to where you enter the red green blue values and entering zero for red zero for green and 255 for blue any calculations in your model are going to be colored black like you see here and then references to cells in other sheets are going to be colored green just like our blue color this is not a default Excel color you get it by going to more colors and then tabbing down and entering a value of zero for red, 155 for green, and zero for blue. You can tell that this is a reference to another sheet if you hit F2, and now the sheet name is in quotations, this DNA, so it's a reference to my DNA tab that you'll see at the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. And then after giving me the sheet name, it tells me the cell address. So this is a reference to cell C5 in the tab DNA. And this green color lets me know that this is a reference without having to hit F2 and go into the cell and look at its contents. Warnings are usually this bright red color, which you can get under your standard colors, that second red. And a lot of the times you'll have comments to explain why this warning exists. There's a good chance you're going to be using external plugins like S&P Capital IQ or FactSet to pull in financial data. A lot of the times you'll color this financial data this dark red color, which you can find under your standard colors. It's that leftmost red. This isn't identical from firm to firm, but at my firm we did this, and I know at many other firms across Wall Street they'll use this same formatting standard. It's also useful to know that when you're denoting negative numbers, you're not going to use the minus sign. Instead, you're going to surround your negative numbers in parentheses. Additionally, your multiples are going to be shown usually in this format with one decimal place and then the X after. And a little bit further into this model, we'll look at how you actually do that. So that's the basic Excel color coding standard for financial modeling. And to give you a sense for why this is important, let's look at an income statement without color coding. It's very kind of blah. You don't really understand exactly what's going on at first glance. Everything is black. So how do you know what's an input? How do you know it's a calculation? How do you know it's a reference? You'd have to go in and individually look at each of the cells to determine what's going on. It's not very easy or intuitive to see how this model works at first glance. Now contrast that with this next exactly the same income statement, but now it's color coded. So my inputs are blue, my references are green, I have warnings in red, I'm pulling in data from external plugins in that darker red. And so now I can very quickly look at this financial model and see what's going on and where numbers are coming from. And I know if I want to change some assumptions where I should do that, where the calculations are coming from, etc. So this is it without the color coding, kind of hard to read. With the color coding, it's much easier to understand what's going on. So that's why it's important. While we're here, I'll point out a couple of other tips on Excel best practices. First of all, my first row and then my last row in this section have dollar signs and none of the numbers in between do. I've removed all the dollar signs. That's because if you have dollar signs on every single number of this table, it gets pretty busy and it's not really necessary if it's bookended by a row with dollar signs on top and a row on, on bottom with dollar signs. So that's a normal thing to do when you're modeling. And second, you'll notice that these numbers are in millions and they have one decimal place. That's also pretty normal. When you're looking at numbers in millions, you'll, you'll take it out to one decimal place. Usually the same thing in thousands. If you you are looking at a number in whole dollars, you'll take that out to two decimal places usually. So if you're looking at your earnings per share or your share price, and then multiples can be one decimal place or two, most often you'll probably see one. 